Welcome to another TI Inspire CX tutorial. In this session, we'll explore the Factor and Remainder Theorem as it relates to polynomials. Before we get started with algebra and polynomials, let's go back to whole numbers. What are the factors of 42? What does it mean to be a factor? A factor is a number that divides another number equally, so there's no remainder. So, for example, we see that 7 is a factor of 42. But this also means that 6 is a factor. This is important to understand as we start looking towards polynomials. We can also rewrite our calculation as 6 times 7 equals 42. In this case, we can also further factorise by identifying the factors of 6. Now we have completely factorised 42 by writing it as a product of its prime factors. So what if we try to divide 42 by 8? We see that this time there is a remainder. So we conclude that 8 is not a factor of 42. Now let's add some terminology. Then we'll be ready to understand polynomials and the factor and remainder theorem. Now we're ready to look at polynomial division. When we are trying to find factors of a polynomial, we are talking about dividing one polynomial by another of lesser degree and obtaining a polynomial as the result. A graphical representation is a great place to initiate our understanding. I'll make f1 of x my dividend, and in f2 I'll create a divisor. I don't know if it will be a factor, but making it dynamic will help me find a factor. My divisor is the simplest polynomial, a linear function. It crosses the y-axis at negative a and the x-axis at a. Now we want to see what happens when you divide one polynomial by another. The result, as you can see, is a somewhat unusual graph. It certainly doesn't look like another polynomial. So, I'll try changing my divisor. Now we see something very interesting. I have divided my original polynomial by x minus 2 and the result appears to be a quadratic, that is, another polynomial. We can use algebra to confirm that our quotient is indeed a quadratic. For the moment, let's assume that it is. We see that our divisor, x minus 2, crosses the x-axis at 2 the same point as our original function or dividend crosses the x-axis. In other words, p of 2 equals 0. The factor theorem generalises this notion. If f of a equals 0, then x minus a is a factor of f of x. We should also note that our quadratic passes through the x-axis at the same points as our cubic function, or more generally, our quotient passes through the x-axis at the same points as our dividend. Putting algebraic skills aside for the moment, we can determine the equation to our quadratic through division. We must be cautious, however, about dividing by zero. Just like our numerical result where we found that 7 was a factor of 42, which therefore meant that 6 was also a factor, our polynomial example tells us that the quadratic equation, or the quotient, is also a factor of our polynomial. And, just like in our numerical example, where 6 could be reduced further, so too can the quadratic in this case. And the final result is that we can express our cubic function as the product of three linear factors, a bit like our 42 
represented as the product of three prime factors. We could have used a graphical representation to find each of the factors, corresponding quotient and remainder. Check out this animation and algebraic connection. So what about the remainder theorem? We know that we get a remainder when our divisor is not a factor. Thinking back to our numerical example, dividing 42 by 8, the remainder was 2. This tells us that 42 is just 2 units away from being a multiple of 8. The same is true for polynomials. The remainder that we see tells us how far off our polynomial is from being a multiple of our divisor. So, the value for f of a actually tells us the remainder, and also how we could change our original polynomial so that our divisor is a factor. So, our remainder theorem states that if f of x is divided by x minus a, then the remainder is given by f of a. That's all for this tutorial. Be sure to download the practice questions from the Texas Instruments Australia website to help revise the concepts covered in this session. A link is provided in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can be kept up to date as we add more videos to this series. Thanks for watching.